exercise to the floor. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Melissa Andre. Uh, I'm the executive director of the Tax Review Board. Please note that we are convening the Tax Review Board session for today, September 13th of 2022. It is approximately 2.05 p.m. With me today is our chair, Nancy Kamerdiner, Paula Weiss, Dominique Ward, and George Matthews, who are board members. Please be aware that this is a public hearing and it is being recorded. Because the meeting is public, participants and viewers have no expectation of privacy. By continuing to be in this meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. Nancy, please take it away. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. The Tax Review Board hearings for September 13th, 2022 will come to order. First, I'm going to identify two items that uh, were on today's agenda but have otherwise been removed. First is item number one, Enoch Jerome, last four digits of the docket, 3315. That matter has been withdrawn. And uh, the last item on our agenda, listed as item number seven, Mukhtar Curtis, or Curtis Mukhtar, I'm not sure which direction that is, um, last four digits of the docket 1985 has been continued. This continuance was approved by the, uh, the board prior to today's hearing. We're going to turn now to our agenda and we're going to be going through them in a slightly um, different order because we're basing the people who are here on their time of arrival and going with the first of those uh, first and that is case number five, trust of Lisa Schenk et al. Last four digits of the docket 0499. I believe they have entered the uh, hearing room and uh, if they would identify themselves for the record, please. Good morning or good afternoon, Madam Chair. My name is Alice Hughes. I'm the attorney for the petitioner. Okay. And with you? Uh, yes, good afternoon. My name is Christopher Shank. I'm the petitioner for the trust under the will of Lisa Shank. Are you an attorney or not? No, okay. no. Then uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth with everything that comes before the board? Yes. Okay, thank you. Who has this matter for the city? Uh, good afternoon, Julia Park for the city of, Philadelphia, uh, city of Philadelphia Law Department. Do you have anyone with you who um, would need to be sworn? Yes, um, uh, we have our water revenue witness, Miss Angela Brockton Long. Is she the only one? Y uh, yes, and then we also have in case uh, uh, if there's any questions for the Philadelphia Water Department, uh, David Renna. But I I don't believe I don't believe he's on this uh, hearing oh, okay. at the moment. So if, if he is going to be um, uh, testifying, we'll have to swear him in later. Okay, thank you. Okay, and uh, Ms. Brockington, please identify yourself for the record. Um, I'm, my name is Angela Brockington. I'm with the Water Revenue Bureau. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth with everything that comes before the board? I do. Okay, thank you. Um, do you have numbers for the record on this matter? Um, yes. The period in question is from March 27, 19 through February 24, 21. Principal is $11,710.29. Zero penalty, zero lien. And the balance is $11,710.29. Uh, Does the city have any other open comments before we turn to the petition? Yes, uh, I believe this dispute is concerning a back bill issued in March 2021 in the amount of $11,710 following a meter service, um, specifically a, an ERT change on February 10th, 2021. So this back bill consisted of uh, the periods March 26, 2019, through February 10th, 2021. Uh, and there were estimated readings. So that's what was, uh, I guess, um, the cause of the meter service. And after the uh, uh, Philadelphia Water Department technicians captured the actual reading from the meter, the, pet the petitioner was assessed that back bill. And uh, for those periods, the usage was 1,622 CCFs. And um, the period of March 2019 through February 2021, that spanned one year and 10 months, which, which is around uh, 22 months. 
And uh, the property itself looks like it's a commercial rental with multiple offices. Uh, the, the city's position is that the back bill was correct, correct as issued since these were actual readings from the meter. Let's turn to the petitioner. Please tell us why you're here and what it is you're looking for from this board. Um, I think that there are a couple of issues I'd like to raise. Um, first and foremost is the, uh, the fact that there was a payment made to the law department in September of 2021. And I'm not sure how that gets credited to the account um, and whether or not there should be any balance outstanding at this point in time. That's that might be something for the department to be looking at during the course of our hearing today. That's why I bring it up first. I also think that um, we believe based on the history of uses, usage, both before and after the change of the meter and the testimony that my client will give today, that there's no evidence of any leak other than one during the time that he was involved as an owner of this property, that the meter was faulty. Um, and that there should be adjustment based on the fact that the meter was faulty. We have, no, we have no problem in paying whatever we owe, but we do believe that the meter was faulty. Um, and we would also like to correct um, Ms. Park's statement with regard to the usage of the property um, during the time of my client's responsibility as a fiduciary for that property. Please uh, continue with, uh, with your, your testimony. Okay, thank you. Um, may I ask questions of my client? Yes, please. Okay. Um, Mr. Shank, can you just describe, um, and also I would like to direct your attention to some of the exhibits that I've presented, um, the death certificate for Lisa Shank and the short certificate appointing Mr. Shank, the executor, executor of her estate is attached as exhibit A to a packet that I presented to Ms. Anders earlier this afternoon. Exhibit B is the deed out of the estate of Lisa Shank into the trust. And I draw your attention to that deed that recites the chain of title. Um, Ms. Shank owned that property in her own right beginning in 2008. Mr. Shank was not an owner of this property ever again until he owned it as a fiduciary on behalf of her estate and then the trust created under her will that deed appears as exhibit B. And then as exhibit C is the deed conveying title out of the trust into another purchaser for value in May of 2021. Um, prior to um, your involvement as executor of the estate, do you know how the property was utilized? Uh, no. Uh, it was a rental property as far as I know. Okay. Did you, when you owned the property with your sister from 2004 to 2008 or 2006 to 2008, what was the usage of the property at that time? Uh, it was a uh, duplex uh, upstairs. It had uh, two, two bedroom apartments on the first and second floor. Um, and underneath was a, uh, an office that was vacant during that period of time. And now during the relevant time period, Mr. Shank, from July of 2017, when your sister died, through and including May, 20 of, of May of 2021, what was the usage of that property? How was it occupied? Um, pretty much the same. The office was vacant and the first and second floor, uh, two bedroom apartments were occupied by, um, the same tenants for the whole period of time. How many tenants were in the first floor apartment? Uh, three. How many tenants were in the second floor apartment? Two. And none of those tenants changed during the time that you were serving as the executor and then trustee? No. During that time, how frequently did you visit the property? Um, e either myself and or uh, we had a maintenance uh, man, were in there at least once a week. Um, we were using it for a little bit of storage and we were in there to check on things, uh, like I said, once a week. And when you say you were using it for storage, what area of the building did you put ha have storage use? The, the vacant office. 
below on the ground floor. So no one was using that space? No. No one was using the toilets in that space? No. No one was showering there? No. Okay. Um, did the tenants between um, July of 2017 and May of 2021, so that's almost four years, did the tenants ever complain to you that there were slow drains? No. Did they ever complain to you that there were backed up drains? No. Did they ever complain that there was low water pressure? No. Did they ever complain that were, there was discolored water? No. Did they ever complain that there was a strange odor when they ran the water? No. Did they ever complain of leaks? No. Um, the only leak, we did have a leak in 17, shortly after, uh, a little while after my sister's passing, um, that we found in the uh, office area below, um, and um, we repaired it. So that was the area that you were using for storage? Yes. And there was a leak there. Did you, were you able to uncover the source of that leak, Mr. Shank? Yes, it was up in the ceiling. Uh, I think it was just a bad joint that was leaking water and we repaired it. And so the, the first floor apartment wasn't impacted? No. And that tenant didn't advise you that there was a leak? No. Did you have bad relations with your tenants or good relations? Uh, I, I believe we had good relations. So I never had any issues with them or Well, anything. did they, if something was wrong, would they complain to you? Oh yes, they would. They would yes, put in complaints. And would you remake those repairs? Uh, either myself or the maintenance man. Thank you. Now, were you present? Uh, I'll strike that. At one point, did you become aware that the payments on the water account were in arrears? I. I got a notice that there was a notice left on the doorknob um, that a shutoff notice for unpaid uh, water bill. So uh, we brought it back to the office and we uh, made an accounting of, of the months that we missed and averaged them out and sent in uh, uh, two payments. I believe the first one was around $1,500 and the second one maybe around 1000 Okay. And when did you first become, I'm sorry, strike that. At what, were you present when the meter was changed on February 10th of 2021? No, I was not. So when you received your first billing notice following that um, change in the water meter, what did you do? Um, so that would have been, Mr. Shank, that would have been the bill that had a balance due of over $13,000. Oh, well, we appealed the, uh, the bill. Um, it, that's just an astronomical amount of, of money. And I, I can't imagine that amount of, of usage. I want to direct your attention to um, your sale of the property in May of 2021. Um, you were aware that there was an issue with the outstanding balance of the water at that time. Is that correct? Yes. And I believe we had an appeal in, uh, by then. What you just described that you did an appeal in March right. of 21. What happened at the settlement? Oh, the title company uh, insisted on taking some of the proceeds and putting them into um, escrow um, uh, till the issue was resolved. And then I believe a couple months later in September, um, they, they wanted to, I guess, get that issue off their desk. So they uh, insisted to insisted on paying the balance to the, uh, to the city. And so I'm going to direct the attention of the members of the panel, uh, along with you to exhibit D, which is the real estate settlement sheet. And the second page of that settlement sheet at line 1303. What does that read, Mr. Shank? I know uh, the print is small. Uh, water sewer balance uh, dispute 
uh, from Brennan Title Abstract Escrow. And what's the amount that was held in escrow? $15,000 even. Okay. And so then I'd like also to, rec to direct your attention to Exhibit E. And this is an email that I received yesterday from the title company. Can you describe what that says? Uh, good morning, Alice. As discussed below, we are accounting. Uh, below is an accounting of the escrow funds held for the resolution of the city of Philadelphia water and sewer dispute for the above file property. Um, Initial held escrow of $15,000, payment to water revenue, $13,071.84. And then the second page, Mr. Shank, what is that? Uh, that is a check in the amount of $13,071.84. And the back of the check where I've circled is, is that the account number, Mr. Shank? I, I believe so. For the city of Philadelphia. Okay. So if I could interrupt for just a moment. Before, Certainly. I, I don't want to, you know, disrupt this, but I think we have two initial um, threshold questions um, that have to do with standing. Okay. Uh, number one would be there's a now a new owner of this property. Um, the water bill is. Um, property base goes with the property, the new owner would be the responsible party here at this point. Is there permission from the new owner for your client to continue this dispute? We did have an agreement based on the escrow account for the dispute to be resolved and should the money be returned um, and be credited to the account, the new purchaser understood that money had to come back to Mr. Schenk. I did not bring a copy of that with me today. Okay, but that was, okay, so that's- That was part of the settlement, yes. Okay, uh, number two, I guess directed to both, really to the city, is this completely paid up now? Is this a refund posture? Which puts it in a different procedural position for us. So yes, it has been paid. Um, there's a zero balance on Mr. Shank's account and also a zero balance on the new owner's account. And what's the date of payment? Let's see. Miss um, Angela? Uh, can you share your basis to screen okay. for this account and show the account history? I just want to make sure everyone sees that. Okay, let me try to do that. Oh, okay. For the current owner? Yes, I think the balance okay. transferred to the current owner and then the payment was made on the current owner's account. Okay. So just for clarification, I'm a little confused. What was the $11,000 that was read into the record? You don't have to answer that right now. You can go through what you're about to do, but I think we're a little bit confused on the board why that number was brought up if we're in a refund posture. Uh, so the 11000 was the back bill that was issued after a meter and herb service on February 10th, 2021. It was in the March, 2021 bill, that back bill. This property was sold in May, 2021. So I believe the title company put this in escrow for the parties to resolve. There's a payment on October. I'm sorry, can you see the screen? Did I share it correctly? Not yet. But we can't. No? <laughs> How about now? Can you see? Not no, yet? not yet. <laughs> okay. We uh, see you though. That's fabulous. You see me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, okay. All right. Now we see Ms. Ward. That's great too. Okay. Let me, let me try that. Let me try it one more time. Okay, how about now? Still nothing? 
Nothing. And it's not showing like, oh, now it's starting to switch. Good. We see it. it is. You see it now? Awesome. awesome. Yes, thank you. We can see it now. So if you see there's a payment, I'm trying to get my hers together. October 22nd, 21 for $13,071.84. And um, and yeah, here's their balance transfer, May 26, $12,718.24. And then you see that payment in October, which left a credit of $125.34. The new owner. Yes, yes this is the new owner's, owner's account. Owners. Yes, yes. And so actually even overpaid even if you're just looking at that back bill mm -hmm. and why is it 12,000 and not the 11,000 number so if we go to Mr. Shank's account um the prior account I'm sure there were some monthly bills after the back bill that were assessed on the account and that's why it went to 12,000 yes Yes. Yeah, see. Yeah. See. Here's the. This is the final read bill, March first, eleven thousand seven hundred ten dollars and twenty nine cents. Um, here's a payment in March for a thousand dollars. And another one. Okay. Yeah, there were several more payments. Yes. Um, when did the When did the property transfer? So why does that hit to 12,718? Um, I think there were just some uh, unpaid amounts. I'm not sure. Maybe from the prior uh, balance before the back bill was generated and that was paid off. That's why there was an increased amount besides the, you know, on top of the 11,000 back right. bill. The, right, the property sold in May of 21. Yes. Yeah can transfer the balance until July. So a couple of those payments belong to the, the, the current owner after May. So they just accumulated bills. And if you, uh, Angela, if can you scroll down just a little bit? Yes. Um, let me see what the bat, can you go down? Can you go? Yeah. So if you see the February 2021 before that uh, large back bill was assessed, there was a running balance of 3,154 on the account that wasn't paid off. Um, and then even though there were subsequent payments made by the water customer, uh, it still wasn't fully, you know, zeroed out. So that's why not that's why it was around 12,000 that was transferred to the new owner. I agree with that, Ms. Park. And I do think it's important to note that, that my client did try to um, come up with some money to pay that back bill. And that first payment of $1,500 was roughly half of that um, large balance that was outstanding before the meter change resulted in this crazy, I call it crazy $11,000 bill. But I, I do want to just draw that to the board's attention because this is not um, this is not a, a, a deadbeat um, customer of the water department. This is someone who, when he became aware of this arrearage, tried it um, given the financial circumstances at the time to make a significant payment to drive that balance down. So let me just ask another question, I guess, of the water department. This bill came about because the ERT had not been registering and the taxpayer had been receiving estimated bills for the period of time from March 2019 to February of 21. Is that how this grew? Yes. Uh, so so the, were the bills, the estimated bills have usage on them or were they zero usage and just service charge and stormwater? They did uh, have usage. It did have usage. Was, yes. I can't mm -hmm. see previous payments. Was he making payments regularly during that time period? May I respond to that, Ms. Weiss? Sure. My client was making regular monthly payments mm -hmm. until the deed transfer into the trust in um, May of 2019. 
for some reason, the address change was not properly handled at that time and bills were going to the property address rather than to the address for the trust. So there's a period of time where bills were not being paid and that generated this $3,100 um, balance in February, the beginning of February of 2021. But okay. as soon as he became aware of that, um, you see the balance he becomes aware of in early February and in very short order, he makes that payment of $1,500. Okay, got that. Now I've got to interrupt you. Just were those bills that generated that $3,000, what kind of usage was on each month? I don't have the account history. If I could direct your attention to exhibit E that I prepared and submitted this afternoon, mm -hmm. that is a summary of usage for the time period that Mr. Schenk has been a fiduciary holding um, title to this property. Okay. And uh, for the yeah. boards, uh, reference if Miss Angela can scroll down just a little bit to, to show when the estimates started. They began in can April. You, and can you April. include all customers? Yes. Include all customers. They began in April of 2019, if I can be of assistance in getting us there. Okay. So if you um, see the screen, commissioners, March 26, 2019, um, it's the estimated, estimated usage started in March 2019. That's an actual reading, though. That, that reading of 3614 generating usage of 17, whatever that is, CCF, that is an actual reading. It's after that that we have all- Yes, that after work. that from March- 2019 to April 2019, that 12 CCFs, that was estimated. Right. Yes. But the estimated readings didn't have zero uses. That's what I'm... I yeah, it wasn't zero. It wasn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, and they look significant. So when you got the actual reading, how did it come up with $11,000 as a deficiency, even though I understand that the actual reading was somewhat higher each month? So... Um, Mr. My witness, Mr. Renna, can explain the the I guess the meter side. But if uh, Miss Angela, can you scroll down to March 2019 again? Yeah. So what happens usually is we, the accounting department at uh, Water Water Revenue, they see the last actual reading, which is right here, 3416. That was what was on the meter in March uh, 26, 2019. And then they just do the calculations of the final reading during the meter service. That was 5350, 5351 here. And that was an advancement of, I, I believe, 1,935 CCFs. Well, actually, That's actually, noted. It's actually 19,350 CCFs. It's not 1,000, it's 19,350 CCFs. And that's divided by the um, 22 or 23 months. And since I'm not allowed to use my telephone as it, while I'm in here, can someone tell me what that 1935 divided by 22 months is? Well, actually it's 20, it's, it's well, the 1935 divided by 22 months is 8,578 CCFs per month, which is uh, significantly, significantly higher than the estimated reads, uh, which indicates there was a leak at the property. And if you notice on the reading following the meter or the earth change, on February 24th, 2021, that reading is still high at 4,100 CCFs. Um, and following that, the readings went down, which looks like whatever was going on was repaired uh, sometime in February, January, February. My client has just testified that there was no leak in the property at that time, that the only leak in the property occurred in 2017. 
And that would have been reflected on that 20, December or January 2017 bill, which in accordance with exhibit F, is a summary that I've prepared of the usage for the relevant time period. Um, and I, I dispute the, the validity of that reading of 41 on February 24th. I don't even think that's accurate. Oh, uh, well, I have some questions for Mr. Shank regarding the property, if that could clarify. Certainly. Some of these um, usage. So uh, like Ms. Uh, Brockton, Brockton said, even after the ERT change, there was an actual reading the month after of 41 CCFs, just right after that. So there could have been internal leaks at this property. So Mr. Shank, did you hire a licensed plumber to go throughout the house or go throughout this property and check for leaks? No, I didn't, I, because I didn't think there was any leaks. Okay. Mr. Shank, were you aware during this time frame of March 2019 through February 2021, if there were any underground leaks, there could be leaks underground that's not visible to the, to the human eye? I wasn't aware of any. I mean, I guess there, there could have been. I, I mean, I didn't see any water coming up through the ground or muddy spots or anything like that, no. Um, and I just have a question about the, I believe, five tenants at, at this property. Are they apartment tenants, like residential tenants, or are they commercial? Um, it, it's really just a, a, a standard duplex with a, an office on the ground floor. And the office was vacant, like I had said before. And the upstairs was just two apartments, first and second floor. And there was like three people on the first floor and two people on the second floor. They're both two bedroom apartments. How many bathrooms and how many kitchen sinks are there? Oh, each unit has one bathroom and one kitchen sink. So two sinks, one in the bathroom, one in the kitchen in each unit, upstairs and downstairs. And during this, uh, if the office uh, were occupied, what kind of off office would have, would it have been? Uh, what, like, is there any history of commercial tenants at that office? Uh, there was a, a dentist in there years prior to that, but um, he had since passed and it sat vacant for many years and everything was pretty much uh, pulled out. There was no more sinks. There was just one bathroom down there. And then the breast was just four walls for the most part. Okay. And I just want to um, show the actual bill that has this back bill. If uh, Miss Angela, can you bring the, can you pull up the March, 2021 bill? Oh, I'm sorry, not, yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, uh, can you see it? Not yet. Not yet. Seemed to flick through and now it's gone. Okay, this is it. This oh, yeah. This one. Okay, how about now? Can you see it? Oh, damn it. Here we go. It's starting to come up. Oh, thank you. Yes, I can see it now. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so, can you go down to the second page? So, this is. This is the actual uh, back bill. And they, so Mr. Shank was charged for 1,622 CCFs of water from March 2019 to February 2021. And if you divide that monthly, that comes around 73 CCFs per month.
Uh, How does that compare to what the monthly? Oh, wait, actually. Well, 1581 yeah. divided by 22. Yeah, it's around that. So it is higher than their historical average, but it could have, like my, uh, like Miss Angela said, it could have been leaks at this property that went undetected during this period. Does any does the city have anybody to testify to that being a possible situation? Yes, uh, I have uh, Mr. Ren David Renna from the Philadelphia Water Department here with me today. We should probably get that testimony from him. That the he, he wasn't there when we were introducing people, uh, but I believe he has arrived, so we would need to get him on the record and sworn. Hello. Oh, all right. Um, Mr. Renner, can you please show your, your uh, camera, please? Excuse me, I can barely hear you. Can you show your, can you uh, turn your camera on? And unmute. Combination. Yeah. Well, he's not muted. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, please identify yourself for the record. My name is David Renna. I'm assistant manager in the metering division. Well, which division? I'm assistant manager. But uh, which division? You said it and I didn't catch what division. The metering division. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth with everything that comes before the board? I do. Okay. Thank you. You can proceed then with your questions for us. Hi, Mr. Renna. Uh, can you please tell us uh, what you do in that position as assistant manager meet at the metering division? I oversee uh, our FSRs and uh, residential workers going to uh, two properties, installing and repairing meters. I oversee the shop uh, procedures all the work in the shop, the testing of meters. And actually I was a super, before I became assistant manager, I was a supervisor and I I did all the testing in the meter shop. I tested and I repaired all meters. And how long have you worked for the water department? I'm going on 24 years. 24. Okay, thank you for your service. Um, are you familiar with this account? I now just what you, everybody's been talking about. Okay. And, and oh yes, please, please, please go ahead. What, what you're saying there, there possibly could have been leaks in there without him knowing there were leaks because uh, there, there are toilets, there's a rubber gasket inside the toilet and that wears over time and the, the tank empties periodically and then it fills back up and I'll keep on doing that as long as that uh, rubber gaskets are not uh, repaired. That, that could be happen, happen several times a day. And is there any other possibilities of an, 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 of an undetected leak at a property yes. besides toilets? It, are we allowed to object to questions at, in this forum or is that not yes. appropriate? Yes, Absolutely. you are. All right. So these are questions that are calling for speculation on the part of this witness. He has not demonstrated he has firsthand knowledge of this property or the source of any leaks at this property. So if I can uh, go back to Mr. Renna's um, knowledge of this property. Um, What system does the Philadelphia Water Department use to track completed work orders? That's not that's not directly answering her objection. Um, if are you aware of the Basis Two program? Yes, I use Basis Two. You use do you you're an active user and you're knowledgeable and you understand? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna share Basis Two on the screen and it's, re it's in reference to the account of 7956 Vary Road. Um, Before you do that, attorney, um, 
Parker, can you please tell me what basis two is? So I know what you're going to ask this um, witness about. Is this a document that I received in your packet that you're no. about to share? So basis two was a software program that was just shared by Ms. Angela Brockton Ting Long to show the reading history and also the account financial okay. transactions. I didn't so realize it's, a, it's just the same program I didn't uh, that we were that showing. I'm sorry, go ahead. So I'm just gonna base uh, my questions off of that program that were that was shared earlier. So I'm going to share my screen and just go back to uh, go back to where the estimated readings occurred. Can everyone see my screen at this time? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I would say that it's important to go back to when um, Mr. Shank became an owner of this property in 2017. That all Well, I have to object to that because that's not in the dispute periods. The dispute periods are 2019 to 2021 in the petition. Well, that's true. This is a question about usage and the historic nature of the usage on this property is reflective of the billing cycles going forward um, during the period and after. Uh, well, it's also regarding the usage um, that could have been leaks. We've just had testimony here. that there were no leaks there. My client has testified that he was there on a weekly basis and observed no leaks, that his maintenance man was there and observed no leaks, that his tenants reported no leaks. He saw no evidence of leaks when you asked him about that. I, I'm Ms. Parks, if I may. Ms. Parks, is there any direct evidence by someone from the water department on site, which sometimes does happen, that leaks were observed? I don't believe uh, we have anything supporting that leaks were observed by a field service representative then technician then at this property. Speculate as to what may or may not have happened if there's nothing, no evidence to directly support it. So let's move on. Well, Ms. Park, may I say something? Ms. Park? If uh, the board allows. Sure. Okay, so I just want to um, just talk about this final read once again, that was taken on February 10th, 2021, which is an actual reading. And what that means is that all the water that was not calculated is pulled at that time to give this accurate reading. And yes, the implied average, which is the 8,578 um, CCFs per month, implied average for, the, for those 22 months, <clears throat> um, it does indicate that there was uh, possibly a severe uh, leak and it also, which shows that that's- With all due respect, with all due respect. Just a moment, just a moment. Hold on, I'm that, board that, member Ryan. Let me just say this last- Ms. Long, the on. board, Mr. Mr. Boyer is on the board. Yes, He's with fine. all due respect, we know what a final reading is. It's up to this board to define if it's accurate or not. We understand. So I, I think this is highly inappropriate what you're saying. We understand, but it's our job to make that decision. So. Thank you. We understand what you what you have. Thanks. So, is there anything additional, Ms. Park, that you have to provide before the board makes its determination? Uh, nothing further regarding this account. Okay. Final statement, mm -hmm. Ms. Hughes. Thank you. Um, I do have a final statement. I, I I'm welcome the opportunity. I want to thank the board for um, the time that they've devoted to this matter today. I'd like to thank um, Ms. Brockington and Mr. Um, Rena for appearing. I think it's really important to understand what 73 CCF per month looks like. That is 53 gallons. 53,000 gallons of water every month. That is the equivalent of filling a five foot above ground pool that's 12 feet wide in diameter every other day 
all year long for 22 months. That seems like if speculatively speaking, there was a leak, there would have been evidence of it. There might have been a sinkhole if it was an underground link leak. It's more than double even the highest actual usage on this account, which appeared back in 2017 when my client testified to the fact that there was a leak, that it was repaired, that it was a result of something he discovered on an inspection of the property. Um, and so I would ask this board to um, agree with our position that the metering was defective in some way. It was rightly replaced. Um, certainly there might be a reasonable adjustment that needs to be made for any potential overage during that time, but $11,700 is just not the appropriate amount. And we would seek a refund of that amount. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Park. So uh, I just want to reiterate that the burden of proof uh, is on the petitioner to show that the city's assessment is incorrect. Here, you have heard that there was an actual reading on March 2019, um, and then an actual reading when the meter was serviced on February 2021, and that was what was assessed on this back bill. So uh, for a period of 22 months, it showed that it was around 73 CCFs per month. And we don't know what the reason is why there was such a high reading, but we there could have been something going on that Mr. Shank or the other property manager was not aware of. So I really uh, request this board to make a reasonable decision. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Nancy. At this time, the board members are going to go into the back. If everybody can just stay put, we'll be back very shortly.
Um, I see that you're on mute. Did you mute? Ms. Hughes? All right. Good. Thank you. No, no problem. That was smart of you. <laughs> All right. Um, I think everyone's back. Nope, nope, nope. Yes, yes, yes. We're, we're still missing a couple of our board members who aren't back on live. They're coming back here. right now. Just missing George. Hi, Dominique. Okay, good. Dominique, you'll be reading in this record, correct? Oh, sure. Yes. <laughs> She sounds so interested. <laughs> I thought it was you, Melissa. I thought it was you. Melissa said, nope, she's volleying. Okay, so I'll thank you. I'll do, it. I'll do it only because this involves some questions with the board's jurisdiction. Um, Fair so enough. Thank you, Melissa Andre, I generally do not read board decisions, but at this point, I'm advising the board as their legal counsel to hold this matter under advisement to clearly, uh, uh, for the board to have a clear understanding of standing. Um, I don't believe, though the city did not raise it, I do not believe that the board has overcome that issue, specifically whether or not the new owner of the property has given the petitioner the ability to stand in his place. We went through the hearing without it, um, but I believe we need a power of attorney or some other legal document, an agreement, as the petitioner's attorney mentioned, an agreement regarding um, what was done at, at the time of settlement, something to affect that the board does in fact have jurisdiction to make a decision on this matter. We heard it, we may not, we, we may not should have, have, but we heard it um, and we want to render a decision, but we cannot without that issue being resolved. So if, um, we are holding, the board is holding this under advisement with my counsel um, to get documentation from the petitioner regarding standing. Um, after that, the board will render a determination. Um, I think the board has a good idea of how it wants to go, but it will render a determination after the issue of standing has been addressed. Um, um, may I submit that electronically? Absolutely. And what email address should I use? Uh, please use mine, um, Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A. -S -S I'm going to give you a, a business card on our way out. Okay, good. All right. Um, in 30 days, and then the board will render a determination. Thank you all for your time today. Thank you. Th thank you very much, everyone. Thank okay, you very We're going to go to case number one now, if everyone just full tight. Case number one was withdrawn. You already read it? Uh, we, we read that in at the beginning. We had okay. case number one uh, was, was withdrawn. It would have come into this position had it not been withdrawn while we were going through things. That takes us to case number three. The petitioner Angelo Rodriguez, last four digits of the docket 2031. You'll need to give us a moment for the uh, petitioner's room to become completely available and for the petitioner to get settled in there. So hold on a moment. Yeah, you have to be up for a minute. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Okay. All right. Nancy, this is number three. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Um, Give you a moment to get settled in there, and then uh, if you could identify yourselves for the record, please. Yeah, Rodriguez, Angel Rodriguez. And with you? Yeah, I'm uh, Andrew Winnitz. And your role or relationship here? It's my father in law. Oh, okay. I just yeah, wanted to get that clear. In, in each case, you've identified yourself to the record, and then if you would, uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth with everything that comes before the board? Yes. Yes. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Who has this matter for the city? Excuse me? I'm asking the city who has this matter, who they're rep who's representing the city here. Hi, good afternoon. Julia Park for the city of Philadelphia Law Department. Okay, and do you have anyone with you who hasn't already been sworn who will be providing testimony? Oh, uh, same witnesses, Miss Angela Brockton Sing Long and then Mr. David Renna. And they were, and they were sworn to, earlier. Sworn before, but they are going to be back in, uh, in for questioning this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have any opening comments before we turn to the petition number? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I left out something sorry. that. Um, uh, numbers for the record that they could be provided. Okay, uh, the period in question is uh, April 21st, 2020, 10, through December 11th, 2018. 
Uh, the principal is $4,267.21. Penalty is $2,797.21. Lien, $241.45. And the total, $7,000. $305.87. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any open comments before we, uh, the, excuse me, that the city wants to add before we turn to the petition? Yes, uh, so for this water account, there's an active payment plan in the system. Per the terms of the payment plan, um, the petitioner, uh, all petitions must be withdrawn. So, I, I would like to know um, if you understood that when you entered into a payment plan agreement, Mr. Uh, Rodriguez. So, so the, the thing is, we were on a payment plan since 2020. It was a five-year payment plan. And back in November, uh, November 29th of last year, the account started accruing penalties again. So that was why we... Uh, we, we didn't notice it until a couple months ago. My mother noticed it, and that's when she contacted the law department, and she was told to file for a the tax review board for this meeting. Um, because she wasn't sure why the payment plan was canceled. Um, and then I guess she just re-signed for another, uh, another agreement, um, I guess, a couple months ago. Yeah, so... Uh I see that the payment plan was entered around July 2022, um, and who, whoever is authorized for this account. Uh, but when you enter into payment plans, you waive your rights to any hearings to dispute charges, oh, she, any charges. So it's it's still active. Right, yeah. I so I would that. object to standing so, in jurisdiction. Parker, was there a payment plan prior to the July 2022 new, what you're characterizing as a new plan or the current plan? There, there was. It was back in uh, um, January or February of 2020. And it was okay. a five-year five payment plan. We were supposed to pay $130 a month for five years. And all right, I want to ask the city what happened to that one. Can you see that, Ms. Park or Ms. Brockington? Yes. So I'm mean, just I could share my screen or Miss Angela can share her screen to show the payment plan. It was uh, it was it looks like it was breached yeah. on so, September 2021, and then a new agreement was entered into the account around uh, July 2022. So there were two uh, payment plans. One was breached and one's active. So the penalties that you're announcing today were couldn't have all only been from September of 2021 to July of 2022. Did that put back penalties from the prior agreement? It's a lot of money. While you look at that. Um, oh, let's see here. Were there, and I guess the other thing to look at is whether or not payments were made in right. that time period or if it all stayed uh, open between the breach date that you identified as being in September of 21 and when the uh, new agreement yeah. started to go forward in 2022. So, so, so the, I, I see the discrepancy in, in, the, in the, the, the documents. So there, there was, um, the payments, yes, have been made since they said, uh, of November, uh, September of 2021, the $130 was still coming out on top of the regular bill, the standard bill being paid as well. Um, so I Mr. Believe, Rodriguez, did you miss, did your mother- there, we, did, we, we missed one payment in the last five years. Okay. One payment. Okay. So I think what it sounds like to me, what we need to do is get a testimony from you all about your payment history and then allow the city to put on their case in chief, um, having their witness, Ms. Brockington, I'm gonna butcher this, what's your last name? Brockington. Brockington Long, yes. Yes, Brockington Long add some color regarding what the payment plan, what the breach was, and then subsequently what happened after that fact. Let's just try to get this testimony lined up accordingly on the record. So, um, Mr. Rodriguez, again, you were testifying that you missed one payment. That's your testimony. Uh, October, October, yes, October of 2021. That's that's the only thing that I don't, I don't see on our, our payment, uh, like receipt documents. 
Okay. Um, yes, it was. A, it, I see October. The payment was made for September, November 7th. The standard bill was paid. And then the standard bill for October was issued for $61. And that was the month that we missed. Okay. So your testimony today is that payments were made on time from January 2020 to October 2021. Yes. And then until even, even after in November okay. um, of, of 2021, the, the payments continued to be paid on time. It was that one month um, that that $130 payment for some reason um, didn't get paid. I, okay. I, I don't know why my mother missed that payment. I, I, I can't speak on that. And then when did you notice that the penalties were accruing or did you start, you noticed them accruing on the bill? No, we, we noticed, uh, I want to say back in, we're in September. So I want to say back in May, that's what made her look, um, that's when she started noticing the penalties accruing. It was like $37, $27. And it was just, and she didn't understand why. So um, we printed everything out and, and looked over everything. And I'm guessing that's when she called to get on the, the new plan. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I guess with mail taking so long, she might have already filled out the document that you have to mail into the tax review board for the case. So that was probably another mistake she made was by agreeing to another payment plan, which she probably thought her payment plan was still good because the $130 has been continued to be paid. Yep. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's just where we're at now as far as her scheduling for a hearing and then also, I guess, accepting new terms at the same time. Um, if, if that was the case, we, we wouldn't even have uh, accepted it because we thought we were still in a payment plan. We okay. I actually just noticed the breach just now as I'm looking through these four pages. I'm going date to date and I'm like, okay, I see where the mess up was when she said there was a breach back in September of last year. That's fine. So May 2022 is when you, your mother began trying to start this process of me, getting, of finding out what's going on the breach. I'm just trying to establish a timeline because based on the petition that was filed, July, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't see a date it's that it was seven, signed. It's dated 726. That's when she, I guess, sent in the document for the for the tax review board. So 726. She, yeah, so she might have she might have noticed the 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 penalties accruing. Um, like I said, May or June. And that's when she probably started calling and, and trying to figure out what was what. Someone must have directed her to file with the tax review board for a hearing. And July 26 is what it's signed and dated for. That, okay. That uh, Council for the city, Ms. Park, do you have any cross-examination? Uh, no cross. I just wanted to show uh, the time where the payment plan number one was breached. And then when, uh, I guess, uh, the petitioner's wife uh, entered into a new payment plan, okay. payment plan number two. But you don't have any cross-examination for this witness? Uh, no, okay. not regarding the payment plans. So, then that's so let's put on your case mm -hmm. chief. So that way you can share your screen and you can have Ms. Brockington Long provide testimony regarding what you're talking about, please. Okay, so Ms. Long, uh, do you have, did you have a chance to review the petitioner's water account? Uh, yes. And um, let me see, what type of property is this? Uh, this is a residential uh, rental. Okay. And who owns this property? Uh, Angelo Rodriguez. Uh, was it discontinuance permit obtained for this property? No. Were there any uh, meter or, or services during the dispute periods at, on this account? Uh, not during the uh, this, the current owner owner. Okay. Were there any billing adjustments on this water account? Uh, no, During this uh, reading, no. Okay. Um, are there any payment plans in the system? Uh, yes. Okay. Can you share that with the share your screen with the board and to the petitioner so they can see the payment plans in the system? Okay, can you see them? I see two. One says cancel, the other active. Is that what we should be yes. looking at? Yes. So, can you explain what happened in the first payment plan? 
Well, the, the first payment plan was canceled uh, due to it being breached. And I can show you quickly. Okay, so, all right, September, September 1st, there was a payment of $130, which is standing as the, the payment agreement plan. And the next payment, payment agreement was $130 on November 2nd. And if you see here, there was a September bill and an October bill that generated. And that's probably what caused the breach. It was that two month uh, gap. So what's that negative or minus 58.98 on, on September 14th? That's a payment. September 14th is a payment. Yeah, so $58.98 and also October 21st. So then the 130 you just testified to on November 2nd was not the next payment. There actually was a payment on September 14th and October 25th? Right, but these are the, the payment agreement payments. So okay. Ms. Long, can you, can you explain um, the contents of a payment plan? Is it the current bill that the water customer has to pay plus a portion of the back bill? Yes. That, can That's you explain correct. that? That's correct. The, the payment uh, agreement is made for a period of time. And yes, there's um, an amount that's supposed to be paid in addition to the bill. I can't see what the payment agreement amount was. If it was $50 plus the current bill, I can't see that. But I see here that the uh, the payments are, and he attested that the payments were $130. Yes, it was 130 plus the, the bill. Yeah. Oh, 130 plus the bill. Okay. okay. And Ms. Long, when when water customers enter into a payment plan, uh, do they receive the payment plan agreement either through in person or through the mail? Yes, they do receive. Actually, uh, yes, they receive the the payment agreement in the mail, although it's not kept in basis. Okay. Are you familiar with how uh, the the terms and conditions um, of the payment plan? Well, typically, yes, the, the, the um, customer is made aware of the, um, the term of the agreement, whether it's a year or two years, and um, the amount that they're supposed to pay, and it will stay in addition to whatever the current balance is. Okay. Um, well, I have for the board, if they want to inspect a blank payment plan agreement, because it has a terms and conditions in the back of that uh, document that says, if you enter into a payment plan, you waive the rights to a hearing to dispute any charges on the account. Before we get there, though, so can we hear testimony regarding the penalties that were accrued? Do those penalties, the twenty-seven ninety-seven, does that represent the armatures? The I guess the escalation from September twenty twenty-one at the breach to. July 2022 when the new payment plan was entered, or is that just the penalties for the entire time? We're just trying to understand where that number is coming from. I believe uh, board member Weiss asked you that. Sorry, are you asking me that or? Yes. Your Ms. Okay. Mrs. Barton, okay. come on. Yeah. Can we understand the penalties and why the number is so high for the time period? I believe it was twenty-seven ninety-seven that you said. Yeah, there are actually I see two uh, penalties assessed: December twenty-seven, and there's one on January twenty-fifth, uh, twenty twenty-two. So those will be based on. They're based on the and again, okay. Oh, just those two penalties. Okay. Okay. So then where did the $2,797 come from that was originally read into the record? So, uh, Ms. Long, um, was the original dispute regarding something different than the payment plans? Uh, well, uh, Yes, the, the um, customer was disputing uh, a balance transfer. 
And is that where the large penalty amount is coming from? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Can you elaborate on what you mean by a balance transfer in this context? Okay. Okay, so um, April, okay, so yeah, the balance transfer is, um, was due to the um, balance that was transferred from the previous owner. And, and that amount is the accumulated balance from the previous owner and a transfer to the new owner. So, so when our petitioner acquired the property, they acquired it with an outstanding water balance. That's that correct? correct. And that's what's being paid off in this um, transaction that we've been talking about, this agreement? Well, that's not what's on the petition. That's not. I, mean, I know that's why I'm confused. Thank you, Nancy. Yes. And let me ask another. Let me piggyback another question while we're doing this. Um, are the how are penalties treated under the terms of the agreement that they signed? Are they supposed to be all paid along with the principal, or is there some abatement or removal of penalty upon completion of this payment agreement? Were there no penalties accrued during a penal, uh, during a payment agreement? Mm -hmm. Those two um, penalties um, that are on the account is because that first payment agreement uh, breached. So for those couple of months, they did accrue uh, penalties until there was a new payment agreement put in place. I understand that, but I don't see how they accrued two thousand seven hundred and ninety-seven dollars in penalties based on what you're showing us on the screen. Okay. I mean, they were still making payments on the, the current bills were being paid, back bill was being, you know, payments were being made, whether it was part of an official agreement or not. Okay, so that amount, yeah, that amount of um, of penalties would, would be based on the balance transfer, the two thousand seven hundred ninety-seven dollars. Okay. So, uh, Council for the City, you are going to show us a terms and conditions back part because your witness is unable to testify to those terms and conditions? Uh, so, we don't actually have the actual payment plan that was sent to Mr. Rodriguez or Mrs. Rodriguez. I just have a blank form in it, and it's the same form that's used for all payment plans um, currently and even at that time um this payment plan was uh rendered so i wanted to show you uh what it says on the back page of the payment plan um because this petition uh i don't believe the the board has jurisdiction as since this payment plan is so active and then um by signing into this payment plan, the, the active payment plan, uh, Mrs. Rodriguez waived her rights to a hearing. So I wanted to show you that, um, if, I, if I may share my screen. Please. Well, Ms. Clark, while you're doing that, assume, or Ms. Brockington Long, assuming that they were to complete this current payment plan, does that take them to a zero balance Which would include the penalties and the lien that currently is due and owing on the account. Or do, or do at the end, do penalties get waived? What are they paying? Miss, Miss Long, um, when, when a water customer enters into a payment plan, it's for the entire back debt, right? Yes, Including it is. principal penalty. Yes. Okay. It's for the back debt, yes. Okay. 
Nothing, nothing usually gets waived. It's just an extended, uh, no interest financing basically for a water customer. Uh, so uh, if you, is, is it, uh, does everyone see my screen? Uh, it's a blank form from the city of Philadelphia Department of Revenue, Water Revenue Bureau. Yep. So yes. this is a typical uh, payment plan agreement. Um, usually it's filled out with the appropriate details, for instance, the account number, the property, and there's a down payment amount. Um, the down payment, like it has some uh, instructions on the bottom of the first page. And then if you go in the back, it says payment agreement rates and responsibilities. I understand that, dot, dot, dot. And there's a series of conditions and terms. On the second to the last paragraph, it says, by entering into this agreement, I'm waiving my rights to a hearing to dispute the charges on the bill. So our, my the city's position is that this petition should be withdrawn. So do you want to cross-examine the petitioner to see if they received this document? Well, if the petitioner can share uh, the documents and that you brought, was one of them a payment plan agreement, Mr. Willis? One thing I have is the account statement. That was the account statements? Yes. It shows all the payments besides the October payment. Okay. So have you or Mr. Rodriguez ever seen the document the city just showed? No, not that. Not that we were waiving our rights to the, no, we didn't even, this is, this, this, from my mistake, from my understanding, this this was actually, if I'm not mistaken, was agreed on the phone because my in-laws were away from November to about July of 2020 due to COVID. They were away from 19. So th this this agreement that was made, she she either was it was either made online. I didn't come to court for it. I am their power of attorney, so I do come to court when they're in Puerto Rico. Um, but a month after this was made, everything was shut down. Um, the original agreement, the month after the original agreement was made, everything was shut down. They wound up staying out of the country for another about five or six months until things warmed up for them to, you know, come back and, and deal with all their legality stuff and everything like that. But we don't recall seeing that document, no. City, can you testify to whether this is a normal business document that's sent out with normal agreements? Do you have a, a witness that can testify to that? Yes. Uh, Ms. Long? Yes. Are you aware of the process of payment agreements? Yes. And, okay. Can you explain to the board uh, how a water customer enters into agreement and what documents are sent to them? Yeah. Explain the payment terms. Um, yes. And the, the customer will typically make the, the payment agreement over the phone. And um, in terms of agree agreement, um, they're supposed to send in a down payment. And then once the they're mailed, they are mailed. Uh, a formal copy of the agreement. Is there any uh, anything noted in the system or a copy of that agreement no, in in the account? No. Okay, it's just mailed out. Yeah, it's an it's automatic. Okay, it's a generated letter that's automatically sent out after a payment plan is entered in, into the system. That's correct. Okay. Is there anything else that any board members want to uh, check on or have all your questions been um, been answered? You ready to step aside? That's what I was trying to verify. If, uh, if there were no other questions, that's exactly what we'd like to do. Okay, hold on everyone.
while we're waiting, can I ask um, Andrew, the petitioner, can can you spell your last name for me? It's the yeah. court reporter. Uh, W-I-N-A-N-S. Thank you.
Where's is Paula? that everyone up? Paula's there. Paula, can you can you do this one, please? Oh, sure. Sorry, we have everybody back. All right. With the, I think we're all back. Okay, tax review board is now in session. Having heard all of the information, arguments, and and looked at the documents that were provided during the hearing, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, it is our decision that they're real. Our hands are tied and. This petition is denied because you have entered into a new payment agreement that does have the terms stating that no appeals are permitted so that for you to maintain that payment agreement, there is really nothing this board can do. Um, and just for your information, the penalties that we talked about today were always part of your original payment agreement. Um, you just now can see them because of the information and documentation received for that little bit of time when the, it was considered breached. So you'll get a letter from the tax review board um, with our decision and you can just continue on that payment agreement until the balance is paid. Thank you for coming in. Yes, thank you. Can I have the board concurrence? Well, Dominic, I concur. Thank you. And, and Nancy Cameron, I concur. And Paula Weiss, I concur. Thank you guys. Next please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, you're uh, free to leave the, uh, the room there and we thank you for coming in today. Okay. The next item on our agenda is case number four, Sylvia Green Jordan, last four digits to the docket 0337. They'll be going into, uh, into the room in just a moment. Case number uh, four is in here. Hello. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please identify yourself for the record. Yes, I'm Sylvia Green Jordan, doing business as Green Jordan and Son. Okay. Uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth with everything that comes before the board? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, if you're comfortable to be without your mask, we might be able to hear you a little better, but if you're not comfortable, um, please uh, continue with, with your mask on. Okay, and I will speak up because I'd rather keep it on because they did not have on a mask. But that's fine. Uh, yes, ma'am. That's why I said what I did, that uh, we know that uh, some people are, are comfortable and others are not. Yes, ma'am. We, we want to go with it, but we also want to hear you. <laughs> okay, um, yes. Uh, who mm -hmm. has this matter for the city? Hi, good afternoon, Julia Park for the city of Philadelphia. Hi, Julia. Do you have anyone who will be testifying who has not already been sworn as a result of previous testimony? Oh, no, with same witnesses, Ms. Angela Brockton Long and Mr. David Renna. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, could we have the numbers for the record, please? Uh, yes, the period in question is uh, 71619 through 91621. The principal is $2,966.94, penalty $173.86, lien $91.45, total $3,232.25. Thank you. Do you have any opening comments before we turn to the petitioner? Yes, um, I do. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, oh no, no, one well, second. That's, I'm asking the city that question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I just, sure. yes, uh, I do have a brief question right before. Uh, Ms. Green Jordan, uh, what is your relationship to this LLC? I am the, I, I own the LLC. Okay, you're the owner. Okay, the yeah. member, sole member. Okay. Sole member, yes. Um, so uh, I believe from, uh, this, pe this petition is questioning the bills from July 2019 through March 2020 due to squatters occupying the property. Uh, Ms. Green Jordan uh, purchased this property at Sheriff Sale. Unfortunately, there were uh, squatters or holder tenants at this property and uh, they were using water. Um, but unfortunately, per the water department ordinances, regulations, the record owner is responsible for all water bills. Therefore, we request that this petition to be denied. When was the purchase? The purchase, uh, are you asking me? Actually, Ms. Park, since she brought it up. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, uh, I have it as July 31st, 2019. 
And do you have the sheriff sale documentation that shows that the water bills have not been abated pursuant to the sale? Are you? Ms. Parks again? It's, is yeah. that for me? Oh. oh, so we could look at the water account. I believe um, there was no balance um, at July 2019, if Ms. Long can pull up the account. Uh, oh, we can wait for that while she's <laughs> oh, okay. turn to the petitioner. Okay. okay. Ms. Green, Jordan, uh, what would you like to tell us about why you're here today? Um, I'm here because I purchased the property, like Ms. Park said, it was in July of 2019. Um, so I was not able to get access to the property because <laughs> you buy the property not knowing whether someone is living there or not. And if someone is living there, it is a process. I could not just go to the pro property and put them out because I asked if I could. Is she okay? Yes, yes, I'm fine. Okay, I, I asked if I could and um, the sheriff department said, no, you must wait for the sheriff's department to handle it. I had to pay money uh, for the sheriff's to, the sheriff department to uh, get them out. By the time the writ was uh, granted, it was uh, in January of 2020 and did not gain possession until March of March 3rd, 2020. So if there was a zero balance prior to January or whatever, the 2019, someone was already living there. So that would not make sense that if somebody was living there and we have record that someone was living there the entire time, because it's a process to do this. I had to deliver service. And if you, each time service was delivered, someone answered the door to that property at 6054 and they accepted service to vacate the premises. They did not do it willingly. And so they had to be ejected. So if water was, say you said there's zero balances, then that doesn't make sense. And if I cannot evict the person or at least go in and fix, and if the first bill that I ever received from uh, the water company, I called immediately and I asked, hey, I understand I can't go in and evict people, but can I do, if there's a repair that needs to be done, if there's a run toilet that's running something so that the bills would not just run up and just waste water. But to be responsible for a bill that I absolutely cannot control, it's just like holding me responsible for something that is totally out of my control. And you don't know who I am. I could be just somebody telling you a story, but I own, I live in another property in Philadelphia and you can see what my history is for my payment. And if I pay, do I have a history of paying on time? And I have a history of paying on time. My bills are like 115, 20, 30 dollars a month, and my bills are paid. I cannot afford to pay three thousand dollars for a bill that I did not incur myself, or be responsible for something that you would not let me otherwise do or remove or even repair. And if uh, the water company will look back at their records, there should be a, a record that the client, the customer, called back in 2019 and ask what, what course of action should I take under these circumstances? And you can note the response that was given. So my question to you is, how are you overcoming what the city just said about the requirements of the law that if you own the property, you're responsible? She just said that there was yes, no bill as of July of 2019 and that the city's witness already testified that the billing is from July 2019 to September 2021. Mm -hmm. So how are, we over, how are you going to overcome that threshold that you would have been a responsible person as the owner as of that time? Absolutely. I absolutely. And that's fine. If I have ownership of the building, we understand I have no ownership of the building, cannot legally go into the building because I, I don't know if this is a rule, but the squatters or the man who owned the house uh, at that time, you know, before I bought it from Sheriff's Sale, was still living there. And I spoke to the Sheriff Department and I spoke to the Water Department. And they both agree you cannot just go in there and do anything. It has to be done in a manner, which is uh, according to the city. So I overcome that by simply saying, 
it, it would not be what I would normally do if I owned the building and was allowed to do repairs or whatever, or just pay the bill. When so, was your, when were you allowed access to the property? What's your testimony uh, today that you were allowed access? Um, I was allowed access on March the 3rd, 2020. That is when the sheriff said possession date, Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020 at 9 a.m. And, and that's a written statement from the sheriff. Yes, ma'am. This is from the sheriff department saying when they actually gave me access to the building. And is that when you were considered to have title to the building or do you have anything that says when you actually uh, achieve title? I understand there's maybe a distinction there. I'm not really sure about that. I know I have all the paperwork. I could certainly find out about that. But as far as being able to say, do anything with the building repairs or uh, fix the water or stuff like that, then it would have been um, after January, after uh, March of 2020. That was March 3rd, I believe you said. I'm sorry. I, I think you said March 3rd was when you uh, first were told by the sheriff that you could have access. That, that's correct. Yes, Mayor. Um, Ms. Green, Ms. Jordan, um... Is this the first time you ever purchased a property at sheriff sale? Yes, ma'am, it is. And how much did you pay for the property? Uh, $23,000, I want to say, $23,000. And did you probably look the at the worst, property? Probably the worst $23,000 I've ever spent. Sorry. Okay. Were you aware that the property was um, being used before you purchased it? No, ma'am. They don't tell you. They let. They do say you don't know whether. Well, I didn't see a sign that said that, but I learned that subsequently after the fact. You don't know if it's occupied or not occupied. So soon as I bought it, I got really excited and I went right there. And there was an air conditioner in the window I saw. And because I saw that, I checked in with the sheriff's department to see what the process is because if there's an air conditioner in the window I thought somebody might be living there so you didn't look at it before you bought it no because most of them are sight unseen they give you a booklet it's in a book so mm -hmm. you don't know what's happening okay um anything else from the petitioner um and not unless you ask me a question that's pretty much what I want to that's say that's what I um does the city have anything else to add because I see that, you know, it says from January to, it says from January the 8th, 2018, November 2018 through November 2019, up until September said they were all zero balances. And I wanted to know how would they have zero balances if somebody was obviously living there. And then it said in October, once maybe my name got on the building or something, there started to be actual readings and nobody ever came to me to say they wanted to actually read it. And they don't have to come to you because uh, they're probably getting it by an electronic means. Mm -hmm. They don't have, don't always have to go into the property. Oh, because, okay, okay, okay. I understand. Does the city have any cross-examination? Uh, not for Ms. Green Jordan. Um, I have some questions for my witness, Ms. Long. Uh, yeah, did you have a chance to review the petitioner's water account? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and what type of property is this? Uh, this is a residential uh, rental. And uh, let's see, was a discontinuance permit obtained for this property? No. And I think this will go to Ms. Uh, Green Jordan's question about uh, the zeros. Um, during the dispute period, did technicians go out to this property? No. Uh, did they? I'm sorry, yes. Okay. Uh, when did they go out? Uh, May 22nd, 2021. And why did they go out? Uh, they. The meter and earth were missing. And would that cause the um, irregular readings that Miss Green Jordan just said? 
Yes, that would cost mm -hmm. uh, zero estimated usage, yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, what did the technicians do on May 22nd, 2021? They installed the meter and ERP. Okay, and then uh, what happened to, uh, as a result of their installation? Uh, there were actual uh, zero usage following. Okay, and were there any billing adjustments made on the account after the meter service? No. And then, um, let's see, just to go, regard, uh, go over what the Water Revenue Bureau's policies are regarding squatters, hold over tenants, other unauthorized people living in a property. Uh, is there any uh, policy regarding that that you're aware of? Uh, yes, there's regulations that the um, owner is responsible for the water, whether there's tenants or squatters. We'll come back to you in a moment. Okay. And as the record owner, is the petitioner responsible for water usage? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Can I just um, ask one? Oh, go ahead, Paula. I have one question. So the readings um, that prior to March, for March 12th, 20, and prior, though, were actuals. Is that correct? Uh, prior to March 2020. Uh, yes, there were actual readings from March 2020 back. back. Okay, so for me, because I when you because you testified that when the new meter was put in, there was the old meter had been stolen. But prior to March 2020, as far as your testimony goes, the meter was there and the readings were actual. Yes, those uh, estimated readings didn't begin until um, September 2020. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Back to the petitioner. You wanted to add something or raise a question? Yes. Um, I feel like if, in fact, um, you want to hold the person responsible who owns the property, I think it's fair. Only if the person has had possession. So if it was a property that I already owned for five years and I let it go abandoned, and water usage or squatters went in there, whatever, I didn't ban and I didn't seal it up good, make sure that it was secure, I could probably not have a good argument. But considering I never had a chance to step foot in this property and be responsible truly for the property, because technically the property, even though it was in my name, it was really still owned by the city in that, I had no control. In your property, you can do what you want. You can say, hey, I'm going to evict these people. You can say, hey, I don't want to have anybody in there. But because I never had access to the actual property, I can't, I should not be held responsible for that. You can hold me responsible now going forward because now with a zero balance, I can now start to show you what my behavior is in terms of how I will handle uh, okay. subsequent problems, but not prior to me being able to get in the building just okay, because my we, name. We understand your point. I, um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I was, sorry. I, I, I was I, beating I, the dead horse, right? It's okay. Yeah. I have one last question. Once you did gain access in March of 2020, did you make any payments towards the current bills as they were accruing? Well, what I did was um, I was okay. I'm going to say I was upset. Yes, I was very upset. And so sometimes you don't always make great decisions when you're upset. But what I did was I made the payments that I knew were my responsibility. When the gentleman came out and he put on the new meter, you charge for that $400 and 200 or something like that. <clears throat> Whatever those were, I did finally pay those. Bills. Okay, that was my question. Yes, okay. ma'am. So okay. yes, I did. Well, and I do, I have you. the receipt here to prove okay. that. Thank, yes, Thank you. Uh, the board's ready to uh, step aside to discuss. I have one question to her. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have any tenants there at this time? There are no tenants there. I'm in the process of trying to make it a nice place for someone to live, but there's no one living there currently. But it what? is it is secured. 
the doors have locks and it's secure and no one can get in there. Okay. So yeah, after you bought the property, nobody was living in the building, right? When when I purchased the property, sir, you you don't know because you kind of buy it sight unseen. It's in a book. You don't know. It doesn't say occupied or unoccupied. That's just the way the city does it. So I did not know anyone was there when I purchased it. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Anything else from anyone? No? Okay. At this time, the board is going to go back and discuss it. Just stay right where you are. Do we have everyone back? No, not quite not yet. Oh, George, I'm just waiting for Paula. Paula, Paula, Paula. Move to the next question. There, there she is. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the board has reached a decision, and we're uh, we feel that we're able to abate the penalty, but uh, not the other items because of the structure of the process. And so um, uh, we agree to abate penalty and we ask that the uh, payment arrangements be made within 30 days of the date of the adjusted bill. That's not the payment itself, that payment arrangements would need to be made. Uh, you'll get a letter from us that spells out our decision. Both sides do have the right to appeal to the Court of Common Pleas within 30 days of the date of our letter. But um, assuming that neither side appeals, we would ask that you work with the uh, Water Revenue Bureau and enter into payment arrangements as soon as you can. Yes, I will. Thanks for coming in today. Okay, I will appeal to the Board of Common Pleas. Please send me the that information. Is, that, that is your privilege. But yes, you will get a letter from us that you should have before you actually approach the 
the floor. Thank you. Can I can I have the board's uh, concurrence, please? George Matthews, I concur. Paula Weiss, I concur. Dominic Ward, I concur. And Nancy Cameron, I concur. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. We have one more item on our agenda. A little bit. And uh, this is uh, item number six for Jaleel Jones, last for business for docket 2448. I believe this is a virtual hearing. So you're not getting into the room. Yes, I see that uh, we have him on the screen. Uh, please identify yourself for the record. Jaleel Jones. You swear or affirm to tell the truth with everything that comes before the board. I do. Okay, thank you very much. Who has this matter for the city? Good afternoon, Julia Park for the city of Philadelphia. Um, you had witnesses before who had been sworn. Do you have anyone else or do we have the people who have already been sworn in? Yes, the same witnesses, Mr. Renna and then Ms. Brockton Ting Long. Okay, thank you. If we could have the numbers for the record, please. Yes, the period in question is <clears throat> April 13, 2015 through June 14, 2018. Principal. Uh, is $4,608.56, zero penalty, zero lien, and the total is $5,144.34. Oh, that's not the principal. Could you do that again? Yeah, that, that's I'm not the part. Yeah, we we're all about to say the same thing. Uh, you gave the principal before is four thousand six hundred eight dollars and fifty six cents. Yeah, no addition to it. Okay, so the principal is five thousand hundred forty four dollars and thirty four cents. Zero penalty, zero lien, and the total is five thousand one hundred forty four dollars and thirty four cents. Okay, fine. Thank you. <laughs> that, that adds up now. Um, yes. Does uh, the city have anything to say before we turn to the petition? Yes. Um, let me see. I believe um, the petitioner is uh, he inherited this property, and the issue seems to be about the balance transfer in the amount of uh, seven thousand two hundred and ninety-seven dollars once he became the owner. Um, the city's position is that the balance transfer was proper due to the ownership change and we request that the petition should be denied. Uh, let's turn to the petitioner and hear from him about what the situation was and what it is he's really looking for from this board. Okay, so the um, last time I was before the board, I was told to um, try to make an agreement with the city. Uh, they told me that they would not make an agreement in regards to bringing down the price. So my thing is with the property is uh, during the time prior to ownership, my father fell ill and since has passed away. So during his um, illness, um, you know, he was unable to care for the property and, you know, after reviewing the bills, I see that the, the usage was high. And after the inspection of the properties, you know, after, you know, my first, my second hearing, I noticed because there was a uh, unoccupied third floor and the toilet was continuously running. So the CCFs on this property is, it is very high. It was very high. And, you know, I just, I tried to make a, an agreement with the city in which they denied. So here we are again, back before the board. Were, were you before the full board before, or was it just the master? I was before the full board, the okay. full board I, I, and I was, I was told to, you know, give, uh, give it some time to try to make a deal with the city in which they would not make an agreement. Okay, just it, wanted to verify that. It was continued before the board before. Okay. Yes. Okay, th thanks for the verification. I just wanted to make sure that we were clear on the record on that. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add before we turn back to the city? No, ma'am. I mean, that's it. I mean, other than, you know, a running toilet, which made the, the usage high uh, for an apartment that was unoccupied. And, you know, at that time, my father, you know, he was unable to inspect the property due to his illness. Um, were you able to access the property and did you inspect it during that time frame? 
Uh, no, I, I live in Delaware. So, you know, my father's property was his property and, you know, during his illness, he'd become mean. So, you know, he didn't want anyone to check behind him because he didn't want to, he didn't want people to know that he was unable to handle his own affairs. So you I just ask, what, is this a rental property? It is a rental property. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. Was there anyone living in the property? Uh, not if there were people living in the property on the first floor. Uh, like I said, the third floor, which was unoccupied, where the problem came uh, came from. So there were people on the first and the second floor. Um, I'm not sure. You know how long? I mean, I know there were people in and out of the second floor, but. I don't know how long he had. When I got the property, there was nobody on the second floor. Okay. okay. Um, let's turn to the city. Uh, yeah, so I just have a question for the commissioners, um, the board members. So it, would this be a decision only today or would we still need to go through the merits? Since there was a hearing, um, it seems like uh, from... Mr. Jones's testimony that there was a no, hearing? No, it, it uh -huh. wasn't a hearing. It looked like it was uh, just a continuous. And it was just a continuous. Oh, uh, okay. I apologize for any confusion. Really. Okay. All right. So, Ms. Long, did you have a chance to review the petitioner's water account? <clears throat> yes, I have. And um, do you know what type of property this is? It's a multi family. Um, four units or less. Okay, and um, let me see. During the dispute periods, the technicians go out to this property to yes. service and meter the earth? Yes, they did. Okay. Well, uh, I'm sorry. So, mm -hmm. sir, sir, um, sir, 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 you will sir. come back to you. We'll Brandy. come back to you. Okay. I'm sorry. But it's her cross examination. It's her direct yeah. uh, case. Okay. And Ms. Long, uh, when did they go out? June 8th, 2016. And uh, why did they go out? There was estimated usage. Okay. And um, what did they do? They changed the earth. And what was the result? Um, there was an adjustment made. Okay. Um, can you, so, so after that 2016 meter service, there was an adjustment? Yes. Is, uh, can you explain what that adjustment was? Uh, the customer received a credit in the amount of $1,752.88. <clears throat> can you explain what a credit is? That was um, <clears throat> money that was... Um, they received that money because of the adjustment. Okay. And uh, was this during Mr. Jones's ownership period or his father's ownership this period? Was, yes, this was during his father's ownership. Okay. And then um, the credit of 1752 I just want to make clarify that. Was that due to, say, overestimation of the water bills? Yes. Was that a yes? Yes. Okay, I wasn't sure. Oh, sorry. That. Yes. Okay. Um, that's all the questions I have actually uh, for this account. There was a service, and he was credited back one thousand seven hundred and fifty-two. So that was removed from the balance at the time. Yes. When was the balance transfer, Julia? Yes. So, uh, Miss Long, when was the balance transfer to from his father's account to Mr. Jones's account, the petitioner's account? Okay, that happened. Uh, June 14, 2018. And then um, the credit and the service, the meter and ERP service, that was back in 2016? Yes. Okay, before the balance transfer? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the city? No, nothing else, Madam Anything Chair. Anything from any of the board members? 
Okay. Uh, coming back to the petitioner, do you have anything to add or ask about? Yes. All right. So um, the city just said that there was an adjustment to the bill. Uh, and what was the reason of the adjustment? The overestimation. And how did they come about overestimation? Was it the water meter? Or they were just guessing the bill? Someone going to answer? Okay, so 2016, uh, yes, they changed the ERT. They changed, yes, the War Department changed the ERT. And at that time, they were able to obtain an actual reading. So, okay. Mr. Jones, what that means is that the while the meter may have been functioning, it was not transmitting electronically each month to the Water Department. So they were estimating what the bill was when they actually went in to look at the meter they got an actual reading and realized they had overestimated the bill and so mm. they replaced that earth so it would continue every month going forward to transmit the reading to the water department okay mm -hmm. that's what an earth is right a meter now it's not the meter it's the transmitter oh so it's, it, it's, it's the part that actually sends the meter reading to um, the water department trucks, I guess, if there's still trucks riding around, um, okay. capturing those electronic transmissions, but the meter itself is separate. And the meter okay. can be working completely properly, but if the earth battery dies or for some reason stops transmitting, they're not getting the reading. So they don't knock on the door and say, hey, let me read your meter. They just well, they did. Yes. That's how they came in and they did. They came in <clears> a <throat> couple of months or some period of time before they realized that consistently they're not getting the readings. And that's when they did get the actual reading. Okay. And they realized they had overestimated and your father got a credit of $1,752 at that time. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to add before the board steps aside to make a decision? No, ma'am. I mean, uh, I think I've pleaded my case. Um, you know, like I said, I, you know, you guys gave me the opportunity to reach out to the city. The city was unwilling to cooperate. And uh, like I said, the, you know, the CCF is uh, extremely high for, um, for that uh, property. Um, I have nothing more, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to step aside and see if we can reach a decision. Good guy. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Just hold tight. Absolutely. Hold tight. Are you trying to get me off the screen?
Okay, Nancy. Okay. Um, the board has reached a decision. It's uh, our decision that um, there's really no option for us at this point, and there's really nothing more that we can do at this at this juncture. Um, and so uh, we ask that you, um, well, first off, you'll get a letter from us that spells out our decision that this has been denied um, for um, uh, any further action. You'll, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> swallowing all. Um, and uh, we ask that you either uh, appeal this decision, which is your right, to the Court of Common Pleas, or uh, which is what we would probably uh, urge you to do, that you enter into an agreement with the city and um, go forward with payment arrangements on uh, the remaining balance. Thank you for okay. com coming in with us today. I'm sorry you had such a long wait. Uh, it took us a lot longer to go through our agenda today than we usually uh, uh, find is the case. And so we, we thank you for your patience and staying with us. Um, we're, I'm sorry, what were you starting to say? Uh, you're on mute, sir. Can you unmute? No, I just said thank you for your time. I appreciate you guys. Uh, yeah. Sorry about you know. all your time. And uh, no, it's, it's no yeah, worries. More for you. Uh, we understand that the master did uh, uh, abate a uh, penalty for you during that hearing, and that was really the only portion of the uh, the matter that we really had any wiggle room on. Oh. And uh, I mean, but you know, like no one saw that the CCFs were high for that property right and that's what needed to happen somebody and that's a word to the wise going forward for all of us that we do need to take a look at what's happening with our bills and act as quickly as we can once we identify something uh, to get it on the record uh, for the board i uh, would like to get concurrences from the board members uh, paula weiss i concur dominic ward i concur george mattis i concur and nancy cameron i concur Again, and I concur as well. <laughs> well. I'm glad you did thank that. You <laughs> thank you very much. Have a good day. All right, folks. Thank have a good day. Thank you all for staying with us. And we have one time. more case. Go ahead, Paula. Okay. Uh, yes, we do have one other one that's on the agenda. That's item number two, the Zulu Nation Community Development. Last four digits of the docket, 2034. Um, and no one has appeared. Has the city had any information or contact regarding this matter? No, we have not heard from Zulu Nation CDC. Okay, and um, let's just double check from our records. Did we have, it, have anything before any hearings or anything that involved? A no, this was, this was the first uh, hearing before the board. Okay, um, so uh, what is the wish of the board? I, I'm guessing that we deny it for failure to appear, but without any further notations. But I, I would concur with that, Nancy. I concur with that too. Dominic Ward concurs. Okay, and I issued it, so I concur as well. <laughs> and I thank you all for your patience today, and uh, hopefully the next hearing will go a little more quickly. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.